Hey crafty friends, it's Christina. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be doing a tour of my craft room. This is going to be my 2024 craft room tour. And over the past several weeks, we have been doing some renovations in the space. And I will show you that in a few. But first, I'm just going to give you a really quick history because you probably have heard me mention this a million times if you've watched any of my other craft room videos. This room is on the third floor, so I have these glorious slanted ceilings that make it very difficult for me to have anything up on walls. Everything I have, it has to be at counter height. I do have a few areas that I can do uh, some wall hanging, but it's not much because of my slanted walls are gonna be on the largest part of my space. My craft room is made up of kitchen cabinets, which I purchased from a local home builder, and they are by the company Homecrest, and they are done in the color Willow. That is the color option from Homecrest. And then my countertops are quartz countertops that I can never remember the name of, but they are a kind of an off-white um, color, not uh, really a cream color, but very, very like a muted white with some gray marbling in them. And I absolutely love these countertops and they have held up well over the past five years. I am going to give you a quick uh, scan of the room and let you see what the whole room looks like. And I'll also give you a quick sneak peek at the new addition to my craft room. But first let's do the scan of what I am now referring to as my studio. The first area I want to show you will be what I call my workspace. This is where I will pull products out and um, play with them and maybe leave them on the counter <laughs> until I pick something else. But this is where I kind of set everything up and play around mostly when I am not filming. The first section is gonna be this little slanted corner cabinet. Then I have a corner cabinet and then I have cabinets that go all the way down. And this is a great space that I love to um, like I said, just kind of set things up and start playing and get inspired standing in this area. Across from that is my craft island. It's roughly about 60 inches long and about 30 inches deep. It's my space where I actually do all of my filming from. I sit here, film, and also it's where I do a most of my crafting when I'm not standing at my workspace, fiddling around and deciding what products to use. On the other side of my craft island is going to be this little nook that I have a very hard time figuring out what to do with, especially now because of the changes that happened in my room. It's become that area that I'm really going to have to work at. The built-in bookcase is was put in here when this room was renovated. Then I have some shelving on the wall and then my TV, which is what I also use as a monitor for when I'm filming. And then I have my tall Alex drawers. Right next to the Alex drawers is the stairway that leads down to the second floor. And then right behind those Alex drawers are some clear uh, acrylic storage things for making blanks, that kind of thing. So t-shirts, wood things, I'm not gonna go over those today. And here's a sneak peek at the new addition. If you've ever seen one of my videos before of my craft room, this wall unit here with the bookshelves, right next to that was a door that led into the unfinished section of our third floor, but we took that door out, widened the doorway, and added on an addition, and then added the door back a little further in to gain some extra space into my craft area. So let's start. I'm gonna start, um, usually where I usually start is at my Alex drawers, which will start there today. I'm gonna start right here at my Alex drawers. On the top of my Alex drawers, I have one of these acrylic cases that is 12 by 12, each drawer, has 12 by 12 cardstock on it, and it's not in any particular order. This is just the cardstock I have and where I left it. In the top drawer of my Alex unit, I have my Alta New inks, and they're just supported with these spice rack organizers that you can buy to put into drawers. I got those on Amazon, and I actually bought them to go into another drawer and ended up not using them in that drawer and found use for them in here because this cabinet actually ended up being completely empty after I've done the renovations. So I moved some things in here that I will use most often in my craft room. The second drawer is also the Alta New inks. And then in the third drawer, I have using the same risers, I have my Concord and Ninth re-inkers and that's all, that is all that's in this drawer right here. 
In this drawer, I have more ink refills. So I have things like my Distress inks, my Distress oxides, and other refills. Again, I'm using the little spice rack organizers that I purchased for another purpose, but was able to use them here in this space. This next drawer is where I have my Decofoil flock transfer sheets. If you've never used them, they're a lot of fun. And I did not know where they were for the longest time until I did the little reorganization of my room and I found them. So they now have their own drawer and I have it on a list to make sure I use those in the near future. The next drawer is going to be all of my ink cubes. I have my Gina K, my Distress Oxides, my um, archival inks are in here. I have a couple full ink pads of Distress inks in here. And then I also have in here, I used to use these all the time. These are the finger daubers for, um, for blending and they are all labeled with the Distress inks colors that they go to. And I keep those around, even though I don't really use them as much, but I still keep them around so that they are handy. And I'm just gonna set that in there because I don't wanna hit the tripod. But the rest of the cabinet is completely empty. So I have at least three more drawers here that I can fill up with more stuff. Then moving over, I have my built-in bookcase. On the very top shelf, I have my fabric that I use for my embroidery machine. They are just all on some thick cardstock chipboard and what I do is I just wrap the fabric around the chipboard and clip them on there and they fit in here perfectly. I have them cut down just to the right size. I believe my cardstock or my chipboard that I use, I cut down to like four by four or something, something around that. The next to the fabric, I have a clear acrylic container that's a, I believe that's an M design container that has my finished cards as well as another set of finished, or a little pile of finished cards. I used to have two of those there, but one of them actually got repurposed for another use. And then right next to that area are these two shelf areas. They are shelves from Lowe's. They're the Roth and Allen. Is it Allen or Roth or Roth and Allen? Whichever that collection is. And on the top shelf, I have some pencil or marker holders from Organize More, and I love those. In the middle one, I have my Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers. And then on the other, uh, side of that, I have my Olo markers. Those are actually Olo markers that are extra that I am keeping there just so when I run out of Olo markers, I have them as a refill. And on the bottom shelf, I just have my camera and some extra knickknacky things that I didn't know what to do with, so I stuck them there. But this section definitely needs a lot of work. I've got to decide what I want to do because in the past, underneath here, I used to have my printers. All of my printers were moved to the landing that is in between this floor and the second floor so that they are on the Wi-Fi and I could just, you know, hop, skip and jump down to the stairs and grab whatever I print out. So we're gonna go over my desk area and we're gonna start on the top. We'll work our way from one end to the other and then we'll move into the drawers. But the first thing I wanna point out is my chair. I got that at Home Goods. It's just a, a bar stool chair. It's great, it does spin. The first thing I have is this little metal tray. I forget the name of the company. I found this idea from uh, Kathy Zilski's video and I loved it and it works great here. On the very top, I have my Distress uh, water spray. I have my bottle of rubbing alcohol. I use that for cleaning off my glass desktop. And then I have my favorite glue here. On the second drawer, I second shelf rather, I have my salt cellar, which I always have a hard time saying that with my little scrubby in there for cleaning my stamps. And then on the very bottom, I have three tape dispensers. And yes, I know that's extreme. This one holds my best ever tape. So I have two of these that are exactly the same and they are from Amazon. They're just white tape dispensers. And in here, I have my larger size best ever tape, my thin best ever tape. Then this one over here is a one inch tape dispenser. And I have been looking for one that was nice. I couldn't really find one that was really nice, but scrapbook, scrapbook.com recently came out with one and it's great for holding the mint tape. And once this is gone, I have another tape that I can put in here. And what I like about this tape dispenser is it is nice and heavy. So when I pull the tape, it really doesn't slide. It's got a, a pretty good grip and keeping it in here also um, on this little bottom shelf here, there's this little ledge. So it does really hold everything in place. These do slide around on your desk, but again, having them in this bottom tray, it keeps it much easier. You can tell I play with this tape all the time. I also keep my heated tool, which is the tool I use just for some quick drying. I don't use this for embossing. 
that's just for a quick dry of some splatters or paint or whatever it is that I might be working with. Right in the middle of my desk, I have this glass mat. This is where I sit and film. I have a reflection right now of one of my studio lights, but the only reason why you're seeing it at this angle is because I'm kind of at a different angle than I normally film because I have a camera right above my desk that points down and you don't see any of the reflections. I did temporarily move in a black glass mat to try it here, but I'm still getting reflections, but it's not from the lights. It's from, you can see my camera in the glass. The white one you cannot see. On the corner, I do keep my little magnetic bowl. That bowl is magnetic, so I can leave it just about anywhere. And what I do is I throw my dies in there when I am crafting so that I know I won't lose them. They stick right inside the bowl. The other good thing is, is my glass mat is also magnetic, so that bowl sticks right to that glass mat as well. Moving over to this end of my desk, I have this little carrier, also from uh, an idea from Kathy Zilski. Actually, I didn't, I kind of did see this in her video, but I was looking around um, one day looking for something to replace uh, what I was using before here that would hold some of my tools and I happened to buy it and then realized that she had it. So I think this is a great little caddy. It has this little wooden handle. The only thing is, is it's really deep. Um, there's two sections and it's really deep on one side. So what I ended up doing was taking some pieces of uh, fun foam and sticking them in at the bottom so that when I put some of my shorter tools in, they don't get lost down inside. They kind of stick up a little bit and I can see them. So I have that caddy sitting here. This is like my most used tools that I grab for the most often. And then right in front of that, I have my little ink stand holder that holds my ink pads. I only have the one in the rectangle because most times I don't even remember to use that one. So I haven't justified going out and buying any of the other sizes. In the top drawer on the left hand side of my desk, I have these bamboo boxes. I've had these forever. I found them locally, but I know you can order them on Amazon. In the front here is where I keep my most used ink that I grab for most often. So most of this is black ink. I do have my Versamark in here as well. And then I have my anti-static powder tool here. This little piece of clipping of paper here is what I use when I'm embossing and I just uh, keep them clipped together so they're, I can grab them all at once and grab put, get them out of the way. The second drawer here, in the second bamboo bin, I have my white stays on ink, my memento ink, my clips that you use for holding on to your embossing what, before you use your heat gun, but I never remember to use them, so they kind of just live there. And then I have another anti-static tool here. And then right in the back of this one, we're gonna move the camera just a little bit. And right in the back, I have another bamboo box. And in this one, I have all of my acrylic blocks. I just keep them right here. If I need to grab them, they're right there and easy to grab. And then this bottom cabinet has mostly paper pads in it that are full size, like the Bristol cardstock, watercolor, and stuff like that. I also have an extra heat tool in there. And then I have my spell binders uh, and my Anna Griffin extra plates in here. So I really don't go into this cabinet very much. I'm not a cabinet person, I prefer drawers, but I have a couple because they are handy for certain things. Before I pop into the middle drawer here, I do have my heat gun on a little command hook right on the side of my desk so it's easy to grab and I can use that really quickly. I just have to remember that uh, I don't hang it right back up because I have burnt my leg a couple of times. In the middle drawer of my craft desk, I have a lot of my flatter kind of uh, supplies. Things like my Misty, I have my Score Buddy in here, I have my mini Tim Holtz trimmer. In the back here are some of my other plates that go to other die cutting machines. I have this giant roll of um, foam tape and then a couple of other different plates. But this is, this is pretty much anything that's flat that um, I use a little often, uh, things like my um, all-in-one jig so I don't lose it, my Alta New, I forget what they call that, it's the sticky mat, and then um, a couple of other things in here. So this, this drawer uh, is gone into every single time I craft. On the right-hand side of my desk, the, there's a section of three drawers, and this top drawer right here is the things that I grab for every single time that I am crafting. 
anything that I need to have access to that I can't fit into the little container that's on my desk goes into this drawer. So we'll just pull you back here. And one thing I love about these drawers is I can access everything in the drawer. In the front here, I have my foam tape or foam squares, uh, tape runner, magnets that actually go with my glass mat, but actually for some, they, they do hold this uh, tray in place because it slides otherwise. The tray is a, a container that I got on Amazon. I actually bought two of these and it's supposed to have two compartments so it expands. And I don't think it's like one of those trays that you would use for your utensils because it has lots of little com uh, compartments in it, which I really like. So I took one side of it out. So they only have this uh, right-hand side that I was able to stick my rulers into. And then in the front here, I have things like my pen blade, my wire cutters, and a couple of other little things that um, I reach for. I have this little pick here. And then in this section right here, I have my remote control for my TV and then my emergency backup in case uh, I have all everything on my studio is connected to that device that you can get from Amazon that I'm not gonna say. Um, but this will turn off in case I don't have um, internet or anything like that, I can shut my light, shut the, turn the lights on and off without it. In the front here, we have a stamp press and that just kind of sits in this section. My most used tool in this drawer has to be, especially of late, <laughs> is the Cricut pink um, measure uh, ruler, measuring tape. And I've used this so many times to measure when I'm going to hang something rather than actually using um, a, measuring tape, like a construction type, <laughs> but that's used quite often. And then there's two little compartments right here, and I don't know if you can see them, but they do have in here, I've got my erasers, and then I have my sand erasers and the one behind it. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a better angle. So, and then back in the back here, I have things like pens and Wink Stella. I took my mini foam squares and cut the sh uh, sheets down in half, and they fit perfectly in this little compartment extra uh, low-tack tape, a little stamp scrubber. And then in the back of there, I also have a little scraper that I can use for uh, if I'm working with vinyl or need to kind of scrub off some goopy things that are stuck to my desk. For the next drawer, I'm just gonna keep you at this angle because it's a little bit easier to see. I have two M Design containers back here and I'm not gonna pull them out because when I do, everything in the front falls over, but they are two different types of things. In the back here, I have pre-made folded cards. I have top folded and side folded. I mostly use top folded cards anymore, but I do keep a couple side fold cards in the back and I have them divided with these little dividers here. These are from uh, comic book, I think they're called comic book magazine dividers or something like that. And this is just cut down to fit inside here and then I put a label on the top that just says what it is. Same thing in this section right here. I have my Pre-cut four and a quarter by five and a half inch cardstock. I have 110 here. In the back is my 80. And then supposed to be in here is Bristol cardstock, but I have not cut any down to get them in there yet. And then I have a whole bunch of my colored cardstock in panels. And I try to reach for those first because I've had them for the longest time trying to use those up. Right here, I have my scrapbook.com paper pads. I love these papers. If you're looking for a nice quality, thinner colored cardstock, I think the scrapbook.com ones are really nice. And then I have a couple of my pattern paper pads here. The rest are mainly just envelopes. And then right here, I have my things like my Tim Holtz um, Distress watercolor paper, the wood grain paper, and then some Yupo paper for working with alcohol inks. This bottom drawer has just a bunch of random tools and things that I use not quite as often and don't need to reach for as often because they are way down at the bottom. I do have my container back here that has my pockets and everything that I use for stamp and die storage. And that is in a container, um, one, another one of M Design containers. And then on the side here, I have a little post-it note that tells me what size to cut my inserts that I add to the inside of those pockets. In the front is just a, I think this is an Ikea container that has some tools in here that, like I said, I don't need to reach for all the time, but I like to still have here at my desk. I have a stamp pad cleaner. 
I do have an extra Misty in here. This one is actually set up with a stamp inside of it. This is my original Misty, the very first one I ever got that I keep that stamp in there. So when I'm making color swatches, I just use that ink or that stamp and ink it up and do my, my stamping. I have some of my extra large pockets that are ready to go for larger dies and stamps. And then right here, I have more of the um, full sheet of the comic book dividers with a little post-it that says what size to cut it at. And then behind there are just extra of the Avery L pockets for creating my pockets for storage. I'm gonna go through the cabinets now in my work area and show you what's in those. And then the last thing we'll do in this section is show you what's on the tops. So we're gonna start in this little itty bitty cabinet. Don't mind the wire mess on the side there. I have a gap in between the cabinets and the wall that um, actually is great for kind of sticking things in there that I don't need all the time, or if they don't fit in any of the drawers, like the larger things. This cabinet right here, and whoops, this cabinet right here has things like my, on the side wall over there is all of my cutting mats for my Cricut machines. And then I have all of my larger size paper trimmers in here as well. Moving on to the next section of cabinets, this section right here has four drawers and I love the four drawer cabinets. They are my favorite. In the top drawer, I have my better press supplies on the right hand side. I keep my ink cubes here. I also have the plat, uh, plate that goes through the, your machine to do your better press uh, designs. I have some of my better press, better press plates back there as well as the cardstock in the corner that is the cotton cardstock for better press machines. Then on this side, I have, well, I have a divider here, a bamboo divider. I used to have plastic ones, but the plastic ones had these like flare at the bottom. I, what I like about the bamboo ones is they're straight down, so it makes it a little bit easier for storage. On this side, I have what actually used to be a drawer from a washi tape con uh, container separating some of my supplies for my floss for either working with stitch dies or I had mentioned that I do want to get back into doing cross stitching, which I haven't done in years. And then in the front is just some more of the floss and stuff that I recently picked up from Spellbinders that I want to incorporate into there. I might even just leave them whole like this. I haven't quite decided. In the second drawer, I have my sequin storage. I have two of these bead storage containers. This one is probably my first one that I got, and then this is a newer one. And I have all of my sequins separated in here. On the very bottom of the containers, I could show you, on the very bottom of the containers, I do write on there, that one not so much, they pretty much don't have any labeling at all. But when I buy sequins now, I do put the color name as well as the company that I bought it from in case I want to add more to my stash for that particular color. And then I have some loose ones at the top that just has not made it to any of these containers. I even have labels prepared and haven't gotten them in there yet. And then I have another bamboo divider. And then in the front, I have the shaker card uh, pockets. I have sheets of acetate for making shaker cards. And then I also have my enamel dots here that are all on a, a book binding ring that I just pull this out. If I'm working at my desk, I could just pull this out and figure out what colors I need to use. In this drawer, I have things like my glimmer machine. I keep my machine right here, so I could just pull it right out onto my countertop and use it. I have my power cord and in the back right here I have my plates for running it through my die cutting machine. I have a bamboo divider here and then I have all of my uh, foil rolls on this side. In the bottom drawer I have things like my few, two fuse tools or two um, foiling systems. I have rolls of deco foil, mink foil, and um, I have like the deco foil transfer gel and my Gina K supplies in there as well for the newer things that I just purchased when I picked up this machine. And that's what's in that drawer. Moving on to the next section of cabinets, I have a three drawer system in this, this cabinet. I have a smaller drawer and then I have two deeper drawers. In the top drawer is kind of a empty section. I have a bamboo sorter divider here, empty over here. And then on this side is where I have all of my embossing powders. I do keep them upside down just to make it a little bit easier to see the colors. And then if I scoot you back just a little bit, I apologize. I do have my, uh, these little diamond trays, and I don't know why they're in this drawer, 
but I also have in the back my big container of the ultra thick embossing powder. And then I have this little container that has all the little tiny spoons in it if I need it for any of my embossing powders. The next two drawers are my stamp and die storage drawers. In this top drawer is where I keep all of my stamps that are kind of everyday stamps. They're not seasonal. There might be some seasonal in here like Valentine's Day, but I kind of contribute Valentine's Day to anniversaries and, and stuff like that. So I don't separate those things out. I have my stamps over here that are currently sorted by company. Again, using those comic book dividers, I just labeled on the top the company and they are all divided in here, except for Concord and Ninth for some reason is up front. I actually, I don't have a divider for Concord and Ninth, which is weird. Um, that is all right here. And then on the side over here are all of my dies. And I recently just separated my dies so they're more by theme rather than by company. So I have like a section back here that's just shapes and it's all just dies that are all different types of shapes that um, are not necessarily anything in particular, like, you know, this one's butterflies. And then up front here, I have things that I call them frames, but I didn't know what else to, to really call them. But I, they're like my um, kind of layered dies in the front here. That could have been the word I used, layered. I have things like background dies, um, border dies. So that is all right here. And then in the very front, I have another one of these M, De M Design containers that has all of my glimmer plates in it. So I have them all separate or all in here, not by separated by company, but they're just kind of in here like my uh, spell binders and a couple of other companies that is what's there. And then on this side, I have my larger stamps. So I have things like my um, Tim Holtz stamps, some rubber stamps, anything that's just super big and doesn't fit into regular pockets there on this side. I do have these deeper uh, drawer dividers here. And I also have these sentiment strips from Simon Says Stamps in here because if I'm trying to get a sentiment or find a sentiment on a stamp set, I also have these here, kind of a reminder to, to use those. And then in the very bottom drawer, I have mostly my holiday uh, stamps, embossing folders, anything that's holiday related is in here. And they're not right now separated by fall or winter. They're mostly just separated or just put in here, stamps and dies over here, embossing folders here, larger stamps in the back. I have my embossing folders on the side here. I also have things like my paper pads. And then in this container, I have another one of those M Design containers in here. And then I have some embellishments and then sentiment strips for the different holidays. The next section is another set of the four drawers. In this top drawer is my new favorite thing, which is playing with the wax seals. I have been having so much fun with these. I just recently picked this up over the holidays when Spellbinders had their bundle for the wax seals on sale. So I have the box right here and I keep the, the supplies for it right there with the little mat that you can use for your wax seals right in the very top. In the back here, I have a acrylic container that's got the actual wax beads in it. Those are the extra ones because I'm keeping them all stored in these little cases that I found on Amazon. I think there were 15 bucks for a whole bunch of these. Most of them went to my husband that he's using for tools, but I kept a couple that I am using here in my craft room. So I put all of the wax seals in here and they are separated by the different colors. And then if I have a seal that I want to redo, like this was the very first one I did and it kind of was off center. So I just put that seal back right in there and I can remelt it and try it again in the future. I have my tea lights over here that you need for melting your wax seals. Just some acrylic pens here, the wax seal stamp stickers. And like I said, in the back here, I have the extras of the seals. I have gold in here. And then I have two holiday Christmas um, stamps there. And then in the back is the instruction uh, cards that were wrapped around the box. I kept the top part of the box here. And then I have three uh, seals that are for everyday use right there. In the second drawer, it's not really themed uh, for anything in particular. And I also ran out of my bamboo dividers, so I couldn't put separate things in here. So this is kind of like a almost a mixed media drawer, but not quite really. <laughs> On the side over here, I have my gilding flakes right there. And then in the back, I have the Sizzix, uh, is it Luster Wax, some gesso, perfect pearls, glitter in the front here. I have paste for doing um, 
like spackling kind of paste. And then I have some spackle tools back here as well. In this next drawer, I have a tin in the back here that has my distressed crayons in it. I have the little blower that you use for the alcohol inks if you're working with those. And then up front here, I have the distressed glaze that is also in the tins that you can store them in. In the front is another acrylic container. I use a lot of acrylic containers in my room. And in here, I have everything that's the distress uh, collage medium, grit paste, and all those type of stuff. I also have a brayer here. I have this little three section acrylic sorter that actually I used to use in with my makeup. I used to keep some makeup things in here, but repurposed it here in my craft room and it's perfect for uh, holding my alcohol inks. I have some blenders here and then I have just a couple of these little uh, needle nose, uh, pin needle type of bottles in here. And I'm not sure why I actually have them here. I think it's because I was putting the uh, the solution for moving around your alcohol inks. I forget what it's called, but I think that's why they were in here. And then in the back here, I have a gel plate. This gel plate is actually mostly used for labeling my distress uh, oxide inks when I'm doing the labels on the sides. And then I have a palette that I've never used for alcohol inks. And maybe someday I will break that out of its plastic wrap and give it a try. In this bottom drawer is the beginning of my ribbon storage, I have ribbon stored in another uh, in the acrylic containers that I have behind my Alex uh, unit, and I want to get them moved into here. I just haven't had the chance to do it because a lot of them are Christmas, so I really haven't been motivated to move them now that the holidays are over. But on the side over here are some baker's twine, some ribbons, both the thinner and the thicker ribbons that were recently purchased from Spellbinders. I have some of the new Baker's twine that Spellbinders just started selling. And then this container right back here has a bow maker. I was watching a video of Nicole uh, Spore when she was doing some tags and she was showing her bow maker. And I was curious and went on Etsy to see if there was a place I could buy them and found an SVG file. I don't have a Glowforge, but I do have one at work. So I took the file to work bought some of the Glowforge material that you use for cutting at Michael's and die cut my own bow makers. So I'm really excited about that. I did play with them once so far. And then the very next cabinet is going to be where I keep all of my vinyl and iron on supplies. I keep them all just rolled and um, sort of separated with iron on on one shelf and vinyl on the other. And at this point, I don't even know which one is which, but that is where I keep all of the vinyl for my Cricut machines. With the renovations of my craft room, this corner here has become a little dark because I did fix and change up how I have my studio lights and they're more focused on my desk rather than all around the room and in crazy locations with wires hanging everywhere. This area kind of got a little dark, but it is fine during the day and it's not terrible, but it does need probably a little bit of a, an additional lighting to this area. I just don't want to put another studio light up if I don't have to. I have a set of three shelves here. They are the Roth and Allen collections. This top shelf up here has things like a little ceramic bowl that has a faux plant in it. And I have a lot of faux plants in my crafty space because I forget to water. Great at watering plants in the, the rest of my house, but for some reason up here, I never remember. A pencil holder that has my Prismacolor pencils in it. I have another one of these that have my Faber-Castell. A random basket that used to have some ribbon and stuff like that in it. And on the very end is a bowl that was my mom's that has a some crochet things in it that she had been working on just before she passed away. On the second shelf here, I have another faux plant. I have a picture of my sister and I that um, I keep up here because both my sister and my mom we lost in the past year and a half. And I like to have a picture of my sister up here with me in my craft room because I feel like she's reminding me to keep doing my thing and she'd actually say something else but I won't repeat it. Um, I have a floral frog. If you're not familiar with these, these are what you use for arranging flowers but they're also great for holding cards up when you are making, uh, doing photos. So you just kind of hold it this way and you can stick the, the card in it and it makes for a great stand for holding your cards. I have another acrylic container. In this container I have all of my felt, which I need to play with. I have a bunch of ideas for playing with felt and I just need to 
uh, really start working on that. This is my year for starting to use the supplies I have before I buy new. Also up on the shelf, I have this binder. It's, I believe, a six by eight binder. It's by Simple Stories. And in here, I have all of my stencils, everything that I use for stencils, and some of them are in pretty, pretty gross shape that I use for card making. And I have them in six by eight uh, photo pockets, I think is what you would call these, but I keep all of them right here that would fit in here. And if they don't fit in here, they get put onto a ring. I put my larger ones that have the hoops in the top, like the Tim Holtz ones, on a binder ring. This is the kind that just uh, has the lock and you just twist it. And they all just stay in here and then I hang them right off my shelf. Moving down to the last shelf, I have all of my Distress Oxides. They're just lined up here and I used to have the a little display for them, but I decided not to put that back and I just went ahead and did uh, just my row and rainbow order of the ones that I do have. And oh, something I didn't mention, when we renovated it, added on the new space, we had to paint it and I ended up painting this space. It used to be kind of an oatmeal color, but I went with more of a, a bluer color. And then I did re-wallpaper my backdrop that I use uh, on the back wall. And I'll show you that in a second. Underneath that shelf, I have my Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cutting machine, which I only use this for my embossing folders. And that's all that I have right there. And then right here, I have a candle. This is the candle I burn most often. It's a DW Home. I find them at Home Goods or TJ Maxx every once in a while, and I'll buy them because it's the only smell or scent that doesn't give me a headache instantly. It's very faint, and it doesn't bother my sinuses whatsoever. Next to my candle are my Olo markers. They had a fantastic sale over, I think it was Black Friday sale, where if you spent so much money, you got a gift card. So I spent so much money and then spent the gift cards on creating a full set of my Olo markers. I bought them so that there was a brush tip on either side. And then I also did a little splurge and also picked up the stand that goes with it. Underneath there, I have my color chart for my markers and that is printed out onto some Express It white cardstock that is exactly what I use when I am working with alcohol markers. So I keep that right underneath there. Next to that, I have my most beautiful thing ever, which is my paper towel holder. And then I have a basket here on the side. I'm not gonna show you what's in this basket. I picked up a set of two of these baskets, um, a couple, probably more than a year ago. And these are great here in my craft room. I like that they're they're angled. I'm not gonna show you what's in these baskets because they are releases for Spellbinders. So I'm not allowed to able, not able to show you those right now, but you'll see them soon in some upcoming videos. Moving down, I have my selection of cardstock here. And I use the M Design white magazine holders. I think they also come in gray. You can buy them in packages of four or two. I just recently added two more to this and I keep all of my favorite cardstock. I have three companies that I really like and that's Paper Tray Ink, Spellbinders, and Concord and Ninth. And I keep them in rainbow order. I don't separate the companies. I just keep them all together. What I do have, instead of using the frosted kind of pockets that a lot of uh, people use to store their cardstock, I went and bought the clear cellophane, or not clear, but the, I don't know what you would call this, this acetate kind of, the thin packaging that uh, that you can, that usually they come in, and I cut off the top that has the flap that has the sticker on it that you fold over, and then just labeled them with the color and then the company name, and I have them sorted here in rainbow color, order, sort of, <laughs> and then I just love that nice color splash that I have in the back there. Next to my cardstock, I have this basket, and it's another one of those wicker baskets that I picked up that is great for storing things like my embossing folders. These are my embossing folders that are not seasonal. They're everyday use embossing folders. Sometimes I leave them in the original packaging or I'll stick them into an Avery L pocket and label with the name of it and then keep also the original packaging because it's just easier to see. I, another thing that you can also do is run your embossing folders through your machine and do a sampler of it. But I find it just easier to keep the original paperwork so that I can see what my embossing folders are. In the front here are all the smaller ones. And then if you move to the back, I have the larger size that Spellbinder has. And then, a whole, well, most of them are all Spellbinders because I think Spellbinders is the only one that does the, the larger size, which I love because you can do a, an entire front card front and back 
with one of these folders. So they're all right here. Moving down, I have these boxes here. These are by Sarah Renee Clark. They are color scheme boxes. And I believe she has two. She might have come out with more, but as I feel like I've seen an advertisement, but I don't know if the advertisement was for just this or for new ones. I didn't want to check because I didn't want to be tempted to buy them. On the very top of those, I have another little container that has my faux plant in it. And the cards below these color scheme cards are fantastic. If you're stuck and you are trying to get some color inspiration, you can pull one of these cards out. What I also like about them too is they have the RGB codes that if you are doing some graphic design work, you can also pull the codes off of that as well. I also have my Alexa here um, for my studio and I have it turned around because I do have some family photos flashing on there. This is not going to stay there. It was brought here temporarily during construction and I just haven't moved it. Moving down to the next section, I have, before I get into my ink storage, I have these little acrylic bins that I bought on, I think, probably Amazon. And in here is where I store things like my Nouveau Drops, my scrapbook.com pops, and anything that's kind of along that line of a uh, bottle, squeeze bottle of acrylic uh, color drops. I think it's the best way to describe it. Down below is my two storage containers for my inks. I have Concord and Ninth on one side, Simon Says Stamp on the other, and I do separate those by company. I don't really know why, but I do. So those live there. And then right below that, I have my Tim Holtz glass media mat. This is the original first glass media mat that I've ever had. And I keep that right here. So again, if I'm working, I have a surface to protect my countertop so I don't accidentally get ink that I can't get off of the countertop on there. This corner, at the end of my countertops here, I have a vintage looking fan that I run during the warmer days just to kind of cool off. And then I have my Gina K blending brushes right here. These are fairly new to me. And I bought the caddy that goes with it as well as the insert so I can keep more things inside here. I also added a little Lazy Susan to the bottom. And I kind of feel like you can buy from Gina K uh, the Lazy Susan to go with this, but I just picked this up on Amazon for a couple bucks. The next to that, I have my Anna Griffin Empress die cutting machine, which I absolutely love. My other die cutting, electronic die cutting machine kind of died and it no longer worked. So I did go ahead and purchase this after reading a whole bunch of reviews and seeing what other people thought of it. Um, Kathy Zilski suggested or said that it was cheaper on HSN. So that is where I picked this up. But then I did go ahead and buy from Anna Griffin's website the little turntable, the craft table, I think is what they call it, which is great. So I could just spin this around and grab from the back the dies that are running through. On the bottom here, I have some of the plates that go with the machine and they live, they just go right here. As soon as I'm done using them, I tuck them right back inside. And that is the studio side of my craft room. My favorite is probably going to be the countertops. I just love all of the color from the different, uh, from inks, from the cardstock. I just love it. All right, we're gonna move into the new edition of my crafty space. We're gonna move into the new edition of my craft area. We added about seven feet onto the craft space. My, like I said, my craft space is on the third floor and I had half of the, half of the third floor was finished for my craft area. The other half was unfinished. So we're gonna hop in and I'm gonna show you, first give you a full look of the craft space and then we'll jump in and talk about the storage. And just to give you a little bit of perspective, that is the studio and this is the addition to my craft space. And one thing I am extremely excited about is having a work area, a computer designated computer office space, which I did not have before. Before I shared my crafty filming area with my laptop and it was a pain because anytime I needed to do one or the other, I had to clean everything off and put it away. And I love that I now have a designated work area for editing videos, or if I'm working from home, I have a spot to go to that's kind of away from the crafty things, but at the same time still with the crafty things. We're gonna zoom in a little bit and I will show you first what's in the cabinets and then we'll go over what is on the countertops. And yes, everything in this section is very black and white, but I have not finished 
figuring out what I'm going to decorate this area with. Right now, I all I was happy about was just getting my computer set up and having an office area, as well as having a real designated spot for my embroidery machine, which is something I couldn't do before. I'm gonna go through this section and I'm gonna apologize for the echo because I have not decorated and put anything in this area. I have a lot of hard surfaces, so my voice is bouncing off the walls. But I'm gonna go through the drawers. I do wanna apologize for the wire that's hanging down. I just got the lights that I'm using in this space and got them all set up so I could do the video, but I have not done any really nice work on making sure that they're nicely set up. So we're gonna go through not all of the drawers, but I'm just gonna maybe do the top two drawers. The bottom drawers are more techy stuff and um, extra things. So we don't need to go through those. But the top drawer here is my office drawer. I have things in here like correction tape, post-it notes, regular tape, highlighters, pens, pencils, um, paper clips and all of that kind of stuff is just living in this drawer right here, which is great because before I had it in a cabinet that was kind of way to the side. So it's nice being able to have something that I could reach for really quickly. In the second drawer, I have notebooks. So I have my Trinity stamp sketchbook in here. I have a notebook that I use just to, for taking notes. I have a bullet journal in there that I don't use because I don't do bullet journaling anymore. I just really basic pen and paper kind of planner anymore. And then I also have all my planner stamps that I've <laughs> I've collected, but I just kind of put them in here in case I ever do get back into more decorative planning. They're here. And like I said, down in the bottom drawers are additional um, supplies like extra post notes, printer cartridges and things like that. So we don't have to go through those drawers. Mm -hmm. And then right here is the opening for where I sit. I did not put one of the uh, drawers, like the flat drawers that I have out at my craft island because that drawer, even though it's great for storing thin things, it is a pain because it's always in the way. My I sit, I have a tendency to sit like cr cross-legged on my chair and then I'm banging into that drawer. So this side, I decided not to go ahead and add that in. And then we're gonna move over to these two cabinets. Now, one of the things with this area was that my other side of my craft room, the original side had a Lazy Susan corner cabinet. And I know that when they brought that up there, they had a terrible time getting it up the stairs because it's, first of all, it was big and it was awkward because I do have a landing. So you have a couple of stairs, a landing, and then the rest of the flight up to the third floor. And they actually had to take that unit apart. That space was um, installed by the company that did the, the cabinets. So the place where we ordered the cabinets, they installed and they did the countertops. But this side, we ended up having my brother do all of the work who, my brother is a contractor and he is just very talented. My dad was not talented. I have no idea where my brother got the skills for carpentry, but he does a great job. Him and my nephew did all of the sheetrocking and installation of the cabinets, the flooring, the electrical, they were they were amazing. And it took almost six, maybe seven weeks, eight weeks if you want to include the wait for the countertops. Um, but anyway, knowing that they were going to be installing, I knew that I was not going to put a corner Lazy Susan cabinet in here. So we went with what they call a blank corner, I think is what they call it. And basically all that is, is this cabinet right here, this thinner one right here, is a cabinet that has a pretty deep end to it. So when I open this drawer, you'll see that there's a whole blank space back there. And I have an idea for how to use that, but this cabinet is not very big because we wanted to make sure we had enough space for the opening for where I sit. Then this side over here is just a drawer with a two-door cabinet. And I'm not a two-door cabinet person, but I did know that I did want a couple of doors because I had some things that needed to be stored. So let's take a look at the little corner cabinet and then we'll take a look at the two-door cabinet. I'm gonna apologize because I know you're getting a lot of shadows. I'm still working on the lighting in this space, but I don't plan on doing too much filming in this area. However, if I do, I wanna be prepared. So I'm working on that, but I'm taking my time with it because it's not a priority right now. The top drawer is really exciting. It's empty. I love it. <laughs> the bottom one is the, what would they call the blank, uh, the blank corner cabinet. And I didn't put much in here because first of all, I know that door is gonna keep smacking onto the other door. But in here are just things like 
bags for storing my Cricut machines or my large mink machine is in here and mostly just like electronic bags for for uh, port portability. I keep them all in there. So that cabinet's not that super exciting. Before I jump into this cabinet here, I thought I would talk about what I have on top of the cabinet because the top drawer actually goes along what's with what's inside of that cabinet. But this right here is my embroidery machine. And one of the things that I needed for this machine was wall space that wasn't slanted because I'm on the third floor, I have a lot of slanted ceilings. So I needed a wall space because this machine here is pretty tall. So the top, there's a bar up here and at the top, I need to have that space. I tried to put it in my other room because of the slanted countertop where that end uh, cabinet is, is not a full length. So this, this particular countertop goes right and straight across. That other countertop has like a corner angled and I can't put anything there. So that, especially anything that's deep like this thing, because it needed about 20, 20 some inches of depth. So it worked perfectly right here. And I have made this my embroidery area on the wall. You can see I have a, a hook right up there that I've hooked or put up there and all of my embroidery hoops for this machine are right there. This, this top drawer is so satisfying. In here is where I've added a whole bunch of bamboo dividers and I have them holding my embroidery thread. So I keep all my embroidery thread here. Ones that are opened have usually these little rubber uh, bands that go around them to keep the thread from being loose all over the inside of the cabinet. And then the rest of them that are fairly newer are still wrapped in the plastic. But you could tell ones that I've used, I have um, opened here. And I am so enjoying playing with embroidery and I can't wait to get back and get my machine plugged in and ready to go again. But she needs to be um, kind of vacuumed and oiled before I start doing anything. But underneath that single drawer is a two door cabinets. And like I said, I'm not a fan of the door cabinets. I prefer drawers because I find it so much easier for organizing, but I do did purposely get one that's two door. And the reason for that is I wanted a place to keep my sewing machine. My machine used to be in the stored in the unfinished part of my uh, crafts or my third floor here. And I needed a place to be able to store that. I don't use it very often, but I wanted a place to store it. I have my sewing machine right here, and then I have a couple of other little things there. And I don't think you're gonna be able to see, but on the top shelf, you can't see, but on the top shelf are, and you can see one of them is right here. That's my extra things of, packages of my cardstock. I keep those there. There's a shelf there, and then that's up there, but that's, that's not super exciting, right? And now let's talk about the countertops in my kind of my office space. I'm not gonna go over great detail. I'm just gonna kind of zoom through this. First of all, I, it's my black and white zone because there's absolutely no color in this area. Um, I have two Elgato lights. I have one on e either end. That's what um, I'm using right now to light up this area. And I think what might be um, a good solution for filming in here, but I need to still continue to work on that. And I don't think I mentioned, but I did end up getting the same countertop that we have in the other space. It's that marbling that I absolutely love in this. And I was so thrilled that they was still able to get that. That little container right there is just a little four bowl container that I've had for the longest time. And I throw my SD cards in there. And I'm gonna quickly go over this office area. I have um, some lights that are from Elgato. They are uh, streaming lights and they're great for lighting up this area. However, I still need to work on that. I have the speakers here. So I have two sets of speakers, one on either, or two speakers rather, one on either side. I have my newest purchase, which is going to be this Mac Studio, which is super fast and great um, for video editing. So that has a home. I have my keyboard. I have an Apple trackpad, which is great for um, editing videos. If you are uh, make YouTube videos and you want to kind of speed up some things, like for me, zooming in and out is something that I always struggle with. And I have a trackpad, so it makes it so much easier to just take my fingers and, and use the pad to zoom in and out. New purchase of a scan disk. I needed a, a new external hard drive. And then another new purchase, which is the Elgato Stream Deck. I don't stream videos. Maybe someday I will start doing live broadcasts, but right now um, that is more of a pro productivity tool. I just bought it 
The only thing I've done is gotten the Elgato lights hooked up to it so I can turn them on and off from there, but I have not done anything else with it yet because I just got that like two days ago. And I've been more interested in finishing up, setting up my craft room so I can give you guys a video. And then the boring part is just in that corner, which is what needs to kind of be fixed up, is a desk organizer that has my planner and a notebook in it, and that's pretty much it. And the only ounce of color that I have is those scissors and my mouse pad that I DIY'd with sublimation. So yeah, all right, that's this side of the, the space. Let's go ahead and move over to the other side. So this is the side I'm in love with. I love this because it's got exactly what I wanted and that was more drawers. <laughs> I love having the four drawer sections. So like I said, this these cabinets are not exactly the same as style-wise as the ones that are in my original space. The original space, the drawers uh, are a little bit different. There's two medium or two smaller size drawers and then two medium drawers. These cabinets have three smaller size, size drawers and an oversized medium drawer, which I love. And we'll go through all of that first and we'll talk about what's in the drawers and then the last thing, well, actually let's go, we'll talk about the countertops and then we'll talk about what's in the drawers and we'll go over all of that too. I'm gonna start in the corner and then we'll work our, I'm gonna start in the corner and then we'll work our way down. In this corner, <laughs> I have a, I feel very posh having a little coffee bar in my craft room, but my darling husband last year got me an ember cup because I think if you remember in my 23 things video from last year, I said I wasn't gonna bring coffee up to my space anymore because half the time it's cold. Well, he got me an ember cup, which keeps everything nice and warm. And then he, this year for Christmas, he got me a Keurig and I love the color of this. So I have this here, but I have this here. This is a bowl that I've had for a long time. I got this when we had, went on vacation to Gettysburg and on our way home, which I live in Pennsylvania. And on our way home, we stopped in Lancaster and I bought this at this little, um, uh, I forget what the name of the, the place was, but it had all these great like homemade kind of things in it, which is fantastic. And I love that. And I have my, my Ember cup there. I have this jar right here is something I had from Ikea. I bought it a lot. Last time I went to Ikea, which was a couple years ago. And that works great for holding my K-cups. And then hiding back there are just is a power strip that is got this whole little section uh, plugged into. And then I have my powdered coffee creamer. I am not a powdered coffee creamer person, but I am trying it because I don't want to buy a fridge just to put liquid creamer up here. So that is my little splurge <laughs> and my little very posh kind of uh, section there. Then next to my little posh Keurig section, I have my uh, Distress Oxides. I moved my um, storage containers. I forget what these are called. I don't remember the company. That's terrible because I've been really loving the Organize More containers for storage. But anyway, I have my Distress Oxides here. On the top, I put my Distress Stains. And then right next to that, I have my brushes that I use with my Distress Oxides. You have to use different brushes for your Distress Oxides and your dye basting. So I keep the white Gina K ones to use with my dye based, and then I keep my waffle flower ones that are the colored, different colors to use with my Distress Oxides. So that is right here, and this is just like a, a three compartment um, pencil holder that I've had for quite some time. Then right underneath there, I have my black uh, glass mat. This is the glass board studio, which is similar to the one that I have on my craft island where I film. And this is the reason you could see that you can see the the reflection of the um, ink storage onto this. And I pick up all those reflections too in the studio. So this came in here and this is gonna be my designated spot here for when I'm working on other crafty kind of things. And next to it, I just pulled out two of my most used Cricut tools, which is the little pick and spatula that I use quite often because I am definitely going to start getting into using my Cricut machines more. Moving down to this area, these are just a couple of things that I recently picked up that, um, these are from Hobby Lobby. I bought these for just some backdrops for photo props. And then I have a project that I'm working on for work for a class I'm teaching in, um, in February. So I have that there because I have to get uh, kind of a sample made of it. And then, pardon me, I just kicked the tripod. Then this stand right here, I just bought it at Hobby Lobby. It was on clearance. I think it was only like $15. I looked all over to see if there was a problem with it and I didn't see that anything was cracked. And I bought it to use for my coffee station and then ended up 
being a perfect holder for my Cricut Joy and my Cricut Joy ex Extra. And it seems to be, and I haven't tried it yet, but it seems to be the perfect height that I could leave them on there while I'm using the machines because it's just the where the mat goes in, it's just up high enough that it'll go right over the edge. I'm hoping. I'm going to try it. If not, I might put something in there just to make it so I can do that. But that is a really cool find. And just playing around here, setting things up, I thought that was a nice little touch that I can have those two machines out. Just below that, I have my laptop and I am going to be holding on to that because if I ever do start live streaming, I'm going to need this for my studio area. And then I have just a planner right there that goes to work. I'm going to talk about this first section right here. And this section right here is all sewing and embroidery machine related. So I'm not going to go into great detail, but we will talk about it since I know a lot of you that follow me are card makers, um, but I do I like to do tons of other crafting things. So this particular section is, like I said, all sewing related. A lot of this stuff I had into my storage room that I did not access. That was the unfinished part of our third floor. And I didn't have, I had access, but I didn't have, you know, convenient access to it. The top drawer here is all the little doodads that you need for your embroidery machine. So you have things like seam rippers and sewing uh, things and needles and pins and scissors and all that fun stuff. So that's what's in this drawer. This unit right here is a sorter that I bought years ago at Ikea and it's come in handy in all different places here in my craft room. The second drawer, again, more sewing stuff. I have things like a little vacuum cleaner for cleaning out my embroidery machine because you do have to kind of get all that little dusty stuff from the threads out. And we have parts for my embroidery machine and my sewing machine, things like Velcro, little, um, that back here is a toolkit that came with one of my machines. And then I have things like zippers and a giant lint roller right there. In this third drawer, I have all my stabilizers for my embroidery machine. I have them all uh, here, they're just kind of mixed in here. So I have the different things like this is a wash away stabilizer and I have these little snap bands like the bracelets that you could just put put uh, around them just to keep them in place. I have sticky stabilizer. I have um, fusible stabilizer. I have cutaway. There's a whole bunch of different things that you need, especially for your embroidery machine. So I have that all stored in here and that is about it for that drawer. And then in this bottom drawer is a mix of things. I've got my little iron in here, which I don't like that iron. I am actually have a new one on the way because that iron leaks and I do not like it whatsoever. But I have thread in here that goes for my regular sewing machine. I have the cards and supplies that I use for wrapping my fabric. I have some lint replacement um, tape. I have a binder that has my instruction book for my embroidery machine and sewing machines. And then I have that little wool mat which you probably can't see it, <laughs> that little wool mat right there is for uh, ironing. Okay, in the middle section of drawers, we're gonna have, again, things that I did not have full access to all the time because they were in that storage room. But this right here is going to be everything that I use for my Cricut machine. I have things like my pens for my Cricut Joy, I have pens for my regular Cricut, my vinyl supplies, my tools, um, I even have some sublimation stuff like these things back here are wraps that you put around mugs. And I have a little cup holder. I have these little rubber mats here, the trivets that are great for putting if you have something hot. I could put it on there to cool off when I am waiting for it to cool. The second drawer used to be shoved into an Alex drawer and I have no idea how I was able to keep all of this stuff in an Alex drawer because you can see the space that it takes up in here. This is my adhesive drawer and I really was really good about not buying adhesive last year, except for I did find that I love that it barely art glue. So I use that quite often, but in here is mostly adhesives. I do have like replacement blades for my Fiskars trimmer, my another roll, the big roll of foam tape, um, easy tack spray. And then I have in this container right here, I have my tape runners, liquid glue, foam tape, and then um, miscellaneous things like score tape, as well as some, uh, what do you call these, 3D dots and, and that kind of thing is here too. Right. This drawer right here is all faux leather um, that I use for my embroidery machine. It's for making all different types of things for in the hoop designs and they all live here. So I have things like my Hobby Lobby ones and then I have packages of sample sets that I purchased. And then down in the bottom drawer is where I am keeping my two easy presses. So I have my larger easy press and then my smaller easy press and that's what's great about having 
what I call the um, little extra of the uh, medium sized drawer because I'm able to keep those things in there because they would not fit in the drawers of my other cabinets. In the very last section of cabinets I have in the top drawer here is just things that are being worked on um, that I recently just did a project for my nieces and nephews, or my nieces rather, for the holidays and took some of these things that my mom had crocheted and we found them when we were cleaning out our apartment and I gave them to my nieces for the holidays and then found out my nephews would have liked something as well. So I have them kind of separated. My nephew Zach happened to be here one of the days when um, after the holidays, after the girls got theirs and said, I would really like one of those. So he was got to pick out the colors that he wanted first. And I just need to order some more frames and get those made for them. I also have a couple odds and add things in here like, like this wire, which I think I got for free when I ordered something. Then some of the scrubby pads and then some of the glassine bags are over here. I also have, for some reason, my gamisol in here. I think it's because I put it in here because I knew it was gonna lean up because I can't tell you how many bottles of Gamisol I went through because it leaked. So I have it kind of tilted here. But now that I have those spice racks in the other cabinet, I think I probably will move that into that area. This next drawer is kind of a marker drawer, sort of, but also it, it's got paint in it too. The two baskets right over here, these are my acrylograph pens from Archer and Olive. I have the separated by the three millimeter and then the 0.7 millimeter right here. I love the 0.7 millimeter. I like the thinness of it. Back in the back here, I have some um, alcohol markers. Those are the uh, Spectrum Noir markers. And then I have my Tombow markers here. And then this section right here, I have my watercolor pencils as well as my acrylic paints. And then I have my paint brushes. This next drawer is a little bit of uh, different things here. I have snaps here that I use for when I am making things with my embroidery machine. Then I have a snap tool. I have my eyelets here. I've had this container of eyelets that used to be much fuller um, for many years. They are my favorite eyelets. And I don't know if We Are Memory Keepers makes these anymore, but I love these. I have things like toothpicks, uh, a whole bunch of metal, different metal things like for keychains. I have these acrylic, uh, I don't know if you want to call them ornaments, but acrylic discs here that you can use for doing vinyl on. I have little binder rings, and then I have the binder rings in the back here too. So, and this tool right here is just a tool for snapping closed those key rings. And that is all that I have in that drawer. And then in the very bottom drawer here, I have things for sublimation. So I have mugs, some um, mouse pads, and different types of tumblers, and they all are in this bottom drawer. And that is a look at my new craft space and my older craft space, which is now I can refer to as my studio. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.